It was one of the largest flying animals that ever existed on Earth. He had a wingspan of 10 meters and was named after an Aztec god, Mit Quetzalcoatl. We made this model in 30 days specially for this themed exhibition. My name is Alex and in this video I will tell you if Quetzalcoatl could really fly and if it was covered with feathers. Contrary to popular belief, Turazars are not related to dinosaurs. Yes, Tyrosaurs and dinosaurs shared a common ancestor, which explains the similarities between the two groups. But calling a Tyrosaur a dinosaur is like calling a man a monkey. All Tyrosaurs died at the end of the Jurassic period, leaving no descendants. Yes, modern birds are not descended from them, they descended from dinosaurs. Scientists call Proteavis and Arctioteryx the transitional link from dinosaurs to birds. Comment if you want a separate video about them. But I digress, let's get back to pterosaurs, which includes Quetzalcoatl. The first fossils of Quetzalcoatl were discovered in Texas in 1971 by Douglas Lawson. The young man was only a graduate student at the time, but was able to immediately appreciate the importance of the find. The fossils he discovered turned out to be the bones of a huge wing. According to estimates, its span reached 10 meters. Lawson later discovered several other fossils belonging to this species. This new pterosaurus scientist named Quetzalcoatl in honor of the Aztec god. He was the son of the goddess Kimalma, and his name literally translates as feathered serpent. The fossils of Quetzalcoatl were not feathered. However, scientists admit that his head and body could be covered with hair-like threads, pycna fibers. They were something between animal hair and bird feathers and could be of different colors. Just imagine a pterodactyl with the coloring of a peacock. Prints of these hairs have been found on fossilized remains of the Tupendactylus and other pterosaurs. Scientists believe that the presence of pycna fibers may indicate that pterosaurs were warm-blooded. The absence of hair on the wings indicates that pycna fibers did not perform an aerodynamic function and were needed to maintain heat. The same function is performed by animal hair. Quetzalcoatl was 10 meters long, that's almost 33 feet, and weighed about 200 kilograms, or 440 pounds. Our Quetzalcoatl here weighs 87 kilograms and is a 1 to 3 copy of the real one. We can make it either static or animated as well as any size you wish. Looking at the size of this pterosaur, a legitimate question arises. What did it eat? Lawson believed that because of its size, Quetzalcoatl did not fish but fed on carrion. And Thomas Luman and Juan Langston debated that. They pointed out that the structure of this lower jaw of this pterosaur differs from the typical scavenger birds. And the scientists suggested that the long neck and long toothless jaws allowed Quetzalcoatl to catch fish while flying over water as modern water birds do. And this was not the end of the discussion. In 2007, a new study came out that argued that for a pterosaur as large as Quetzalcoatl, such kind of a flying style would have been too energy consuming because of the strong drag of its beak in the water. So the question of how Quetzalcoatl fed remains open to this day. Its ability to fly has also been questioned. This pterosaur had powerful pectoral bones to which muscles were attached. Unfortunately, the complete wing bone has not been yet discovered. Therefore, scientists compare the few fossils of Quetzalcoatl with fossils of other species. This allowed them to reconstruct the body structure of Quetzalcoatl and model its flight. The scientists quickly found out that such a giant could not simply rise into the air at the expense of its wings. Quetzalcoatl couldn't just spread out its wings and take off because of its weight. Having made calculations, scientists assumed that Quetzalcoatl made a jump of 2-3 meters and spread his huge wings. This method was quite energy consuming and unsafe, so most of the time Quetzalcoatl spent not in flight, but on the ground. American scientists have compared the lifestyle of Quetzalcoatl to modern herons. These large birds stand motionless in ambush to grab someone with a powerful beak and swallow it. Judging by the skull, Quetzalcoatl could eat everything that lived in the water, and his beak was adapted for sifting through the mud and extractions of mollusks and crustaceans. But it was hardly capable of catching its prey in flight 
or diving in it from the height. Despite the fact that it's not studied well, Quetzalcoatl can rightly be called the T-Rex of the Terrazar world. He was once the king of the sky and now graces parks and themed exhibitions. You can order his model in any size and color from us. And that's all for today. Comment on which dinosaur or pterosaur you want to see next.